the Louisiana Commissioner of Administration, Mr. Jay Darden, is here. Good morning, Mr. Jay. How are you today? Good morning. Doing fine, thank you. How are y'all? Friday. Tell us about Friday. You, oh, went you had to, a wonderful day, didn't you, Jay? You, you went to the Senate, and <laughs> and you can take it from right there. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm used to the Senate. I was there for a while, and, and uh, it got a little animated in front of the Senate. And really, it's kind of part of this whole process. The Senate was uh, deliberate in wanting to make certain that it enacted a budget or passed a budget. And our argument was that we ought not have a budget right now. We ought to wait until the special session arrives and we're, we know how much revenue we have and we can match up expenditures with that. Uh, the budget that the Senate passed by their own admission, the chairman's own admission, was a pretend budget. It, it, there was no expectation that this would become reality, and, and I was interested in making certain that the public had an explanation of exactly what this pretend budget looked like compared to the equally pretend budget that the House passed. And so... We now have these two competing budgets, neither of which accomplish what the states need, the state needs. And, you know, the two of you and I have been talking about this for well over a year. And what we've been saying for the past year is that the legislature is not going to be able to fashion a responsible budget without making up a portion of the revenue that's rolling off the books. And, and the action of the Senate committee and the House as a whole evidences that. The, the people who say we can cut our way out of this have been unable to propose any cuts that don't devastate the state. And this is what we've been saying. So if if the Senate budget is a pretend budget, uh, have, has the governor been giving pretend warnings? Absolutely not. I think this is the best evidence of that, isn't it? I mean, both of the houses have, have fashioned budgets that uh, either devastate health care or devastate everything else in, in state government. So it's pretty obvious that these fake war- these allegations of fake warnings uh, are wrong. But I guess if the Senate budget or the House budget isn't going to be the final budget, if if because the special session is coming, right? Well, that's right. I mean, as soon as we get out of this regular session, which hope, hopefully will be at the end of this week, uh, the governor will bring the legislature back in a special session when revenue can be on the table once again, and we can have a discussion about how much revenue is going to be raised in order to satisfy uh, the, the budget demands that the that, uh, the legislature is wrestling with right now, knowing that it doesn't have the necessary money. Senate President Alario seemed a little irritated, agitated, maybe with you or maybe with the whole situation. But he also said, Jay, I was watching that meeting. He said the governor's budget that he presented was also a make-believe budget. So everybody's dealing with these make-believe budgets, and now we're the public is worried we're no longer going to have SNAP benefits. You said we're going to lay off 2,000 state workers. What what's going to be the end result and the final settlement? The the budget we presented by our own admission was not the budget that the governor wanted. He was constrained to do that by virtue of the fact that the revenue estimating conference indicated that there was no money. And again, I think the, everybody in the House, particularly who was talking about let's just cut this budget, has been unable to do so. The end result will be in the special session, revenue will be raised. The question is how much and expenditures will match up with whatever revenue is raised by the legislature. My guess is that there will be a significant amount of revenue raised because it's been proven that we can't do what members of the legislature want to do, that is fully fund cops, fully fund health care, make certain we don't lay off 2,000 people, make sure we don't end SNAP. And to do that, they're going to have to raise a significant amount of money. And then we'll, we'll have a session where the budget and – revenue is on the table at the same time we haven't had that yet in all this debate so you're coming to shreveport tomorrow for a oh let's say a meeting of the minds of shreveport's health care big uh, big town hall meeting shreveport's health care professionals what are you going to tell them what are you guys going to talk about what is jay darden going to say it'll be the the same thing we've been saying all along we'll we'll go through the two proposed budgets that are out there and, and how they're really not tenable and and talk about the revenue options and talk about where we go from here. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to being there and, and assuring the folks in, in Shreveport that we're going to save the medical school and we're going to make sure that uh, health care in Shreveport has continued to be delivered in the manner in which it's been in the past and, and hopefully in an even uh, more efficient way when we were able to seal the deal with Oshner, which is very close to happening. But obviously, it too is dependent upon uh, a successful budget. Jay, let me let me ask you this because I, I struggle with this. When you sat down before the finance committee on Friday and you said we would no longer ha- be able to provide SNAP benefits, we would lay off two thousand state workers. 
is that are those decisions from Jay Darden? Are those from John Bell Edwards? Are those from the department heads? Who's making the call on where we're going to cut the budget? And aren't there well, other no, options? No, no, there aren't. I mean, remember, my reaction on Friday was based upon the Senate Finance Committee amendment that it had adopted before I spoke. It basically said, this is the budget that we're going to send to the full Senate. And there was no real explanation of what the consequences of that budget did, and that's what I was setting out to do, was to talk about, okay, this is the budget you want, this is what the consequences of that budget will be, and that is based upon looking at it and seeing where the money is, and by their own admission they acknowledge that when you cut 25% from everything in state government based upon other cuts that have already occurred, you're just not going to be able to function. But did the governor know you were going to say SNAP benefits will be gone? You and, you and he yeah. obviously agreed to that, right? Well, it's not a question of agreeing to it. There was no money provided to the department to administer the SNAP program. And and so when you have a, a devastating cut like it's been imposed, uh, for example, the Department of Children and Family Services had to pick between do we continue to care for foster children, do we continue to care for uh, children who are abused, do we do, we do what we're, all the other functions that the department does, or do we spend money on administering a program, and we don't have the money to do all that. I mean, these are these are the kind of choices that had to be made. The legislature could say, well, hey, let's keep the SNAP program, but we're just not going to worry about any other children. We're not going to be fiddling with adoptions, and we're not going to talk about foster care, and we're not going to go out and investigate when children are abused. Uh, those are the kind of choices you have to make when there's no money to do that. I think it's uh, safe to say that historically the Senate has been a little more sympathetic to the governor's wants, et cetera, than has the House. Do you think that Friday, do you think that Friday, that what went on with you and the Senate on Friday or the Senate committee alienated them somewhat, or do you think uh, things can get back to how they were? No, it, it didn't alienate them. Of course, it, 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 they didn't like my presentation. I understood that, and I, and I apologized to them. I said, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm trying to make sure the public understands the consequences of what you've just done. But, uh, you know, we're all big boys, and we understand how this process works, big boys and girls. And, and uh, I've spoken to a number of members since the meeting, and, no, this is not going to gum up the works. This was a, this was a, a one day of frustration, and, and we're now on to trying to fix things. I think everybody is committed to making this work. And I certainly don't think there's going to be any alienation or any long-term repercussions from the little dust up we had on Friday. Percentages, Jay. pardon me, one more quick one. Go Percentage ahead. of, in your mind, the budget getting fixed in special session? Oh, I think it's going to get fixed. I think it absolutely will get fixed. Now, the question is, is it fixed to everyone's satisfaction? It takes, it takes $648 million to be able to do everything we think we ought to do. And remember, that's a, over a $400 million reduction in the tax burden on the people of Louisiana from what they're paying right now. We've got a billion four rolling off the books on June 30th with the, the federal government changes that provided additional revenue to us and the governor's position all along, $648 million is the magic number we need to do what everybody wants to see done in the state. If we don't raise that much, then there are going to be some additional reductions. And by the way, there's going to be $120 million in cuts even if we do that. So this is, again, consistent with what we've been saying during the ramp-up to this uh, debate during the last year's fiscal session, this year's special session, and now this year's regular session. Jay Darden, 11 o'clock tomorrow on Margaret Place, the old Christus Shumpert. You'll be there for a town hall meeting. The public's welcome. Thanks for your time, sir. Good talking to you all.